Welcome back friends. In this video, we look at an amazing educational resource for anybody who's interested in programming and logic. This resource is called Blockly Games. Um, I'm going to talk specifically about Blockly Games for Scratch programmers, which means students who have been learning programming in Scratch. Uh, as you know, my name is Vineet and I myself have been teaching Scratch to a lot of students for the last one and a half years. So this video is really about how does a scratch programmer approach blockly games so before we go there let's first understand what blockly games is uh, well like i said it's this amazing website where you get this interactive logic logic and mathematics games and puzzles there are totally eight categories as you can see here and each of these have multiple levels so it's highly interactive and it's quite interesting for the same reason and this is built on blockly which is a block coding language now obviously scratch is different from blockly but as i'll show you it's in fact very similar uh, which is why students of scratch can easily go and make use of this resource and in fact i really think they will benefit a lot playing with this now to go to blockly uh, blockly games you should go to https dot blockly uh, you know slash blockly games and i can show you how that looks well i've come here notice this is blockly games in fact you can do it in many many languages so there's like lots of languages here and including you know hindi for example right other indian languages but we'll stick to english for now now like i said there are eight categories in which there are multiple activities now if you click on this thing called info for educators you will find that all these eight activities are basically you know described here briefly so puzzle is the introduction to blockly uh, maze is introduction to loops and conditionals bird is a deep dive into conditionals like if, if else and so on and so forth a uh, turtle is a deep dive into loops movie is introduction to mathematical equations music is an introduction to functions uh, pawn tutor introduces text based programming and finally pawn is like kind of like a full fledged game right now to make all this come alive let us just get kind of get a feel for what this whole thing looks like right so uh, like i said there are eight categories here we'll get started with the puzzle now puzzle really is an introduction to blockly right so this is very interesting because a lot of students coming from scratch may not immediately relate to this because the syntax is i mean the, the look and feel is a bit different but what uh, this puzzle hopefully will convince you is that really this is very similar to scratch right so for example in this particular puzzle uh, you know we have this for instance duck and this has been solved for us so we take the picture of duck snap it in uh, we tell how many legs does it have and what are the traits the duck has right now here uh, let's take another example say for example cat right i can go and choose the cat's picture here uh, and you know then i can say okay it has probably you know cat of course has four legs i can say it, uh, you know the uh, the features are let's say traits are say whiskers and so on right i can do it maybe the same thing for a snail a duck and so on and so forth right now the point to understand here is that though the interface look different but it's really 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 similar to scratch uh, you notice how these blocks kind of snap into each other just like they do in scratch and how using this you can imagine we can build code right so puzzle is really just to get you started and i think that's uh, that's the whole purpose right but having done puzzle now let's look at the other categories right the maze is very very interesting uh, the whole idea behind a maze is that you know you have this person uh, this uh, you know this let's say this character it must reach for example to this destination right now as it says stack a couple of move forward blocks to make me reach my goal right and how do i do that right i've already got one there i can snap another one so i've got a code and i can run my program to see what happens right now you may say well what's the big deal this is so simple right uh, but it gets more complicated as we go on right now this also shows you the javascript which you can maybe choose to ignore if you do not know javascript doesn't matter right uh, it says are you ready for level two yes i am ready for level two and see what happens in level two right so i get a little bit more complicated thing so what do i do here well i move forward then i say i'll turn left then i move forward again and i say i will turn right right if i did this and i run the program i can check if my program works if it did not then it will tell me to okay so my program did not uh, okay so the reason it did not work is because I forgot to add this move forward. So I can reset this and I can run my program again. Right, so notice how beautifully this program runs, how you are able to snap all this together and it immediately tells you if you're ready for, let's say in this case, level three, right? Now, if you go to level three, for example here, and the reason I'm going there is because I want to show you that there is this block called repeat until, which works exactly the same as scratch repeat until. In fact, all these blocks you'll see parallels in scratch and that's what makes it very interesting right now if you're thinking that this is all very easy uh take it from me and in fact the portal also tells you that if you go to level number nine or actually level number 10 you got to solve this and 
with a certain number of blocks and in fact this is an extremely complicated exercise right so uh, the level i mean the, the the difficulty level keeps increasing so for example this will be level seven and you got to think more and more and that's the beauty of this whole platform that makes you think right and, and you know it develops a computational thinking that way right anyway moving forward to the bird it's a little bit similar to maze also like you know conditionals and so on and so forth however what you have to do here is to make this bird reach the nest and in this case, it's a little bit like point in direction and scratch and move forward, right? So I can use this heading and just like scratch, I get here this arrow. So for example, I want this bird to move 45 degrees. So it goes and moves, say 45 degree, picks up the worm and gets to the nest, right? Now I'm ready for level two. As you can imagine, level two gets more involved. So here I have to use some if else condition, right? What happens before the bird catches a worm? What happens after the bird catches a worm, right? And you can again see that if I just look at level 10, say level nine here, uh, it, it must be much more complicated, right? So you can imagine I have to look at some conditions like X and Y conditions, uh, probably some and conditions to make this loop, you know, work and make the bird go catch the worm and then go into the nest, right? So, uh, you know, it's obviously a lot more involved than the first level, but you can imagine that it makes interesting. It becomes interesting because it also gets harder, right? Next, we have the turtle, which is much like the pen extension in Scratch, right? So what happens is that, for example, here I have to draw, let's say, uh, you know, I've got, uh, let's say the turtle, which moves forward by say some number, uh, you know, or turns. And then I've also got this repeat loop, right? So what I need to do, for example, to make to, to make a rectangle, I can move by say 100 uh, steps, um, you know? And, and so if I just tried this, let's say, yes, it's fine, so it turns. And now I can loop this into a repeat loop, right? So when I did this, I reset and I try again. Right, so it creates this diagram. Right now, once again, it shows me the JavaScript code. If you know that, that's good. Otherwise, you can just say okay. Uh, you can imagine that this also starts to get complicated. For example, level two, you got to do now a pentagon, right? And uh, if you were to look at, let's say, something like level, say, level nine, uh, so you got to do these three stars and then some kind of a crescent moon, right? So you can imagine this is a little harder you got to choose colors you know you have these loops plus the turtle also has the pen up and pen down blocks just like we have in scratch right uh, moving forward let's say we looked at you know uh, say movie now movie is beautiful because you really make things move right i mean so what happens here in the beginning you got to you know you have these blocks available to you circle rectangle line and so on and so forth you got to you know uh, let's say uh, create put them in a certain way to say which color you want where do you want the x and y coordinates of the circle and its radius likewise for the rectangle and the line which are these two and eventually if you go to, let's say to another level here you also have a variable called time right so with that okay so i can just you know you can see what the project wants it to wants you to build which is kind of a rectangle which is this person whose hands move and if you look at let's say this is the ninth level in this you got to do something quite interesting if you click this you know you have to write code to do something like this right and it's uh, this requires a lot of thinking it requires logic it requires uh, understanding of some amount of mathematics and also uh, you know elements of draw right so this you can imagine is quite interesting uh, next we have this thing called music so music is again an interesting block uh, it's a little bit like the music extension in scratch and what happens here is that for example i have to play this piece of music you know for those of you who know how to read this music it is uh, let me just write c d e c right so and, and indeed i can play these notes so for example i say play note c4 i can duplicate then i say play note say you know i can just use the uh, you know the the uh, the cursor here to control which note i'm playing of course i can choose it's a quarter note or a half note and so on and so forth right so i can now say play c d e and then finally it's again a c right so if i did this uh, then again, let's say I play a C, right? So I can test this program. So I've done done well, and you know it says you're ready for level two. Again, the difficulty level keeps going up. So if you were to look at, let's say level, you know, so uh, for example, we just see level nine, for example. Now what happens is that you got these multiple lines here, you know, multiple music lines. You got to make them all play uh, with a bunch of delay blocks and so on, right? Now one thing with this activity is that it's a very elementary a very let's say basic usage of what is called my blocks in scratch because what we are going to have to do is to lump statements into a function right and you know call them so it's not very involved usage but it's it's kind of gets you familiar with what is called my blocks in scratch for example right now going forward there is this game called the pawn tutor a pawn tutor is essentially kind of like a shooting game so we have this you know we have uh, this person who's got a cannon so for example i just it says cannon 070 so i'll shoot it notice a ball kind of goes out of this character but the idea here is to go and use this ball to hit 
you know this character uh, i mean this enemy in this case at right, the target yeah now the thing is that as you go on okay as you go on this target actually gets quite involved in fact if i just let's say ran this i don't know if it will show you notice the target also keeps moving like a pendulum right so you got to do a lot more calculation a lot more programming to make sure you actually hit right so it, it gets interesting and one of the things with this particular thing is that it also allows you to write code in javascript right so it's uh, you know it, it's kind of like you know basically uh, interplay between the text and block coding right so that's also nice and again the final level has got uh, some more things mathematics loops and so on and finally we have this game called pond which is really like a full-fledged game uh, where you get variables functions and you know you got these four players which i think you know makes a quite interesting game yeah so basically what i'm trying to tell you is that this is an interactive resource where multiple levels and as you notice uh, since i played some of these some of these have become green because it's kind of monitoring how much i have proceeded right so if i want to let's say undo all this i can just clear data and you know then i'll be sort of back to normal right so uh for scratch programmers you'll see there's lots of similarities yes there are differences but similarities i think significantly outweigh the differences so what i've done is that i have you know created a sort of path for you which you could potentially follow so i'm trying to going to map some concepts for you um, as they apply to let's say blockly games versus scratch right so i would say everybody who is going new to this uh, resource should start here which is in puzzle uh, because that's the way to get familiar with the way blockly codes blockly you know uh, blocks work right next i would recommend in line with the y um, uh, programming methodology let's say a, a curriculum i'll recommend you go to turtle and get familiar with how the code moves right so you know turtle is just like our pen extension um you know so you have blocks like pen up pen down repeat loops move you know make some circle make some let's say squares and pentagons and so on which is quite nice and that gets you familiar with how does the whole uh, you know a program work right next my recommendation would be to go to music because uh, like i told you this is a very basic introduction to my blocks the whole idea is we use my blocks just to lump up statements and run them right and uh, you know as you can imagine there's a music toolbox in scratch too which is very similar to what's going on here right after getting familiarity with let's say both of these you could probably possibly go into maze which as you saw involves you know conditions like if then else repeat until you know these logical conditions movement turning and so on and so forth and having done that you can move forward to do let's say the bird which is quite similar to maze i would think but with this additional notion about direction right as you know we also have this in scratch it's a little bit different in blockly but the whole thing is similar because you also have a dial so even if you don't understand these angles you can go with common sense and try to solve the problems right having done this you could go into movie which i would think as you know a little bit like our pen platformer where we draw these shapes using my blocks just that these blocks are already drawn for you right so you got to think on where to draw them what should be their size i uh, use them in a little bit more advanced manner using uh, some bunch of mathematics so i think movie could be a good choice there uh, next i would think you could go to the pond tutor which has a little bit more general my blocks like we had the canon for instance and then finally you can get into Bond, which is like i said a full-fledged game involving variables and so on now this is no compulsion that you must follow this path this is just a recommendation in fact i think a reasonable approach here would also be what is called the breadth first which means that you can kind of like sample so start from puzzle maybe sample a little bit of turtle then go a little bit of music do a little bit of maze because as i said the difficulty level keeps increasing and the later levels are actually quite difficult right so maybe you can do the initial levels first for all of this then go back to say maze some level and so on so forth so you can have breadth first and then go down depth right but no matter what it is i think you are going to enjoy this as a scratch programmer uh, the three key takeaways i think you should have from this one is that this is excellent practice of computational thinking logic and mathematics number two i think this will give you ideas that you can use in your own games right so you know you look at some projects say okay look i can use this project in my own game or my own project this idea also on that note uh, just see how well these activities are making the user or the player think for example the maze game it doesn't solve by itself it wants you as a user to think of some algorithm some logic to solve it and i think that's a beautiful thing right so if you were to build such games in scratch i think those could also be extremely useful right so with that you know i hope you found this useful my final message to all of you as always is to forever enjoy coding and i think blockly games uh, is one such avenue where you really enjoy and really learn okay take care thank you so much bye bye